His truth will be my light. What good is it to gain the whole world but lose your soul? What power but his can counter the weight of sin?
So I lift up my hands and praise you again and again. Cause all that I have is a hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know it's not much, but I've nothing else fit for a king except for a heart singing. Just one move with my arms stretched wide. I will worship you. So I lift up my hands and praise you again. Good morning, everyone. It's 11. So why don't we stand and get ready for worship today? And yeah, before we start, um, let's just declare Psalm 100. Um, yeah, may this um, shape the way that um, we worship God today. So on the count of three, one, two, three. Make, make a, a joyful, joyful noise, noise to the Lord, Lord all the earth. Serve, serve the Lord with gladness. gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. We stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. The earth, the earth 
is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. And together we sing, everyone sing, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord. Together we sing, everyone sing, oh, holy is the Lord, God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory, holy is the Lord. b 
above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonder this world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what you're Son, you live to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, tremble on the ground, you took the form, and now you reign, crucified, lay behind the storm. Jaded and alone like a rose Tremble on the ground You took the form And now you reign above all Like a rose Tremble on the ground You took the form Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all majesty, risen King, Lamb of God, holy and righteous, blessed Redeemer. heaven shout your praise oh the heaven shout your praise oh creation bow to worship you how wonderful how beautiful
sing that again. Jesus, beautiful Savior. Jesus, beautiful Savior, God of all majesty, risen King, Lamb of God. Five minutes surrendering everything, lay down everything, looking back 2023. If you have something to repent, repent right now. If you have something to celebrate, celebrate right now. If you have something to thank for to God, thank to God to it right now. And proclaim His goodness and love, power, and amazing His uh, uh, the love for us today. Let's worship Jesus through that. Can you spend just three minutes reflecting on 2023? Let's pray.
lives, Lord God. You never fail us. Even when we are not faithful, when we are not able to follow you, you always lead us. So today, help us to see this God. Help us to see this loving Father. Help us to see this beautiful Savior in our life. Thank you, Jesus, for your sacrifice on the cross. We love you, God. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a big clap offering, church. Amen. 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 All right. Today is the... Uh, wow. Well, keep, keep talking. I'm going to keep talking about the whole day, right? Last service of 2023. It's not the last service, of course. Um, we go through this offering every way. But how about we give God something special? Right, not just a m o u n t of money, but your heart. Your heart as in, God, my life is about you. Life, Christian walk is not just about receiving, but also giving. And this God is generous. This God is faithful. So understand this, all of our, our amazing, beautiful relationship you can experience through this. How about I just pray over you before you give? And we're going to have the moments of giving together as a worship. Father God, as they hand, touching uh, their phone and giving the offering uh, for the kingdom, for this church, Lord. Lord, I pray, Lord, would you whisper into their ears. Let them assure that you are in charge over their life and over this, this world. No matter what happens, No matter what disease, what war, what struggle, what financial crisis we face, we trust in you, Lord. We believe in you. And you will provide us. You have provided us. So give us the heart of God in us so that we can reach out to the lost and the last and the least. Thank you, Lord God, for this time. So that we not just be consumers anymore, but we are contributors to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow in your presence. No more, no man will you dare to stand before you. Oh 
let's give God a big level for one more time. All right. Good, good, good. Okay, let's go through some announcements. Before we jump into that, and we have uh, some guests here, um, uh, Jacob's parents came to see, came to see, to, not to see the Jacob and uh, Jesse, but the uh, granddaughter, right? <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> And I see, oh, I see the Clarence parents are here, and uh, thank you. We can just stand for a second, okay. A lot of parents joining us. And what do you know, we have uh, the David song and uh, Mary song, <laughs> Daniel and uh, the John's parents as well. Wow. You wonder why all the parents are coming now? Oh, it's a Sine. What are you doing? Wow. All right, from Melbourne campus, like a, welcome Joseph and uh, Sine here. And Ella. All right, so good to have all these uh, um, familiar faces. It's awesome to have you guys. And so we have a few things here today, so we're going to speed up a lot of things. Uh, please pay attention to all this. Um, we have a few announcements. Let's go. Early morning prayer, as you know, and late night prayer, LMP is all. So, today I promised Jacob, I'm going to finish service very early, <laughs> by already 11.40, all right. Anyway, welcome Queensland, welcome Melbourne. Today's sermon is short, but I believe this is going to be something very crucial for the rest of the rest of the year in 2024, because it sets the tone of the whole theme. The theme of 2024 is, as you know, let's say, one, two, go. I thought about it, I pray about it, because I really believe this is what God has placed in, our, in my heart and prepare in store for all of you guys. 2024 is going to be the year of victory. Can you say Amen. Come on, church. Can you say amen? amen? Of course, you know, we heard that. We heard that kind of claim. We heard that kind of message here and there. And, you know, I know some of you guys, I'm for take away. Hey, someone is excited right there. You know, saying, hey, we're going to be victorious. We're going to be victorious. And somewhat, I got disillusioned. Somewhat, I got disappointed because it sounded a bit too humanistic and over-promising, under-deliberate, and that kind of situation we over and over again. So, when we come to the word victory, what does come to your mind? And I really want you to experience the victory and from the small thing to the big thing, but there's a key that you should not, key words that you should not miss out so that this victory is the victory of God, victory from God, the victory of, you live the victorious life. Can I tell you, you are destined to live victorious life. Can you say amen? It's not the prosperity gospel. No, it's not. It's not the, some form of this, like disillusion, the Christian faith. No, it's not. It is actually real and true, biblical truth, that God has called you into the victorious life because Jesus has conquered and he is the victor. He's inviting us. So how are we going to do it? Now, but before we jump into that, I need to let's set a very good, uh, important boundary and foundation. To get the victory, you need to get the surrender. You have to have a surrenderedness. I know victory and surrenderedness are always, almost conflicting to each other, right? But in biblical, gospel-centric understanding, victory only makes sense when you understand and believe the surrenderness in our life. Today is the last Sunday of 2023. What, what goes around your mind? You know, Daniel, what, what goes Daniel line? What goes in your mind? 2024, yeah, you're going to get married, yeah. You know? Is that the only thing? Right. So a lot of great things you're planning, right? But as you plan What naturally comes into people's mind? Yeah, a lot of people. Not everyone, but a lot of people. Fear creeps in. You know, worry comes in. And as you're planning more, and the more worry comes in, or some people just go dive into next year with this naive optimism. So it's going to be all right. Everything's going to be okay. But I want to direct you for the next few months, a few months through this season that we go through 
time, you are not only dreaming of a victory, you are not just planning the things that will never come true, but you actually experience this. I'm far too old to just talk about dreams. I'm actually quite interested in that you live in the dream now. So you need to hear me out very carefully. Although it's a very short uh, sermon, it is very, very crucial to set this whole next year and in the right direction, right turn, and right tone. So Babel passage comes from Matthew chapter 6. Let the Bible speak for itself, yeah? Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, and what you will drink. Know about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider lilies of the field, how they grow, they neither toll nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the gra grass of the field, which today is uh, alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore, do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? What shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen. This is the message for you guys for the rest of the 2024. Hopefully, did lay the foundation. Now, but there's a wrong approach to this. In your mind, oh, this is very helpful, emotionally healthy, and psychologically beneficial words. And so you turn this into, so I should not worry, I should not worry. You focus on the worry, but then you're missing out the whole passage. That's why you're always thinking about the running away from anxious, but you end up being different anxiety or anxiousness. Why we keep on running around and dreaming about things, a different life, different journey, and just hoping that 2024, it will be different to 2023, just simply because it's the end of the year and beginning of New Year. You know that. This is another year and another day. Same day, we just draw the arbitrary line saying this is a new year. You know? Did you know that in Russia, they have a different Christmas? It's not to, uh, December 25th. It's a January something like this. Eastern Orthodox has a different tradition. So we've been believing Jesus was born 25th of December. No, that's not. You know, we don't know, right? But the thing is, that we come up with an idea. Okay, let this day special. Let's make this special so that we can actually celebrate Jesus. What is a new year? Why does it have to be, it can be different to you? This is a problem that some of you guys have. Just because your calendar turned, your life will turn around. It's going to be the same day. Why? Because you're bringing exactly the same issue of last year into the new year. You haven't changed. They said you can run around so fast, but you cannot outrun your shadow. The shadow will always follow you. And what I'm saying today, this passage has to bring you the attention to the right thing so that you can actually live the life without the anxiousness and worry and fear. What is it? It doesn't, will not come from focusing on the worry or anxiety. Say, oh, I should not worry. I should not worry. No, that's not the point of this passage. What is this passage talking about? What is talking about? Jesus says this. He's saying, like, why are you worrying you know, that God will look after the lilies on the field and the birds in the air? Why are you worrying? You, got, you, got, you have no control. Yeah, number one, you have to acknowledge you have no control. Worry is an attempt to control something that is not in your control, right? That's the first thing. And then rebuke Jesus. Do you know what your problem is? 
you know what your problem is? Life is filled with worry, worryful things, you know, the things that you're concerned about, like parents are here, my children going to Egypt. It, it brings worries. Like when I sent my daughter to the Lebanon for a whole year, and I'm a pastor. So no, I didn't worry anything. No, actually, that's a lie. We worry to sick almost every day, you know? Worry is a part of our life. You know, I'm going into new season, going to having this new treatment of my Crohn disease and all this stuff. You know, there are thousands of things you worry about. The Bible does not disregard about the reality of your life that you have things to worry about. But what is Jesus is telling us, teaching us? What is Jesus rebuking? He's saying this. Oh, you little faith. He's saying, ultimately, it's a faith issue. It's not the circumstantial issue. It's actually faith issue. What he was saying is, do you know this God? If you know this God, then why do you worry? I know you got something to worry about. I know you got the things going on around your life. But do you know this God? Where is your faith, oh, you little faith? No matter what goes around the world, ultimately comes down to faith. This is where I want to draw your attention to today and for the rest of the journey. Faith is turning your me-centric Christianity into God-centric Christianity. Faith is what is the impossible life into the possible life. Faith is turning in this worrisome, anxious life into the joyful and life filled with the promise. The faith is in the center of it. It's a transitor. It is a transformer. It changes your life. Faith. Now you're asking me, then what is faith? Right? I can spend a whole series on this, but I have a two minutes, one minute, maybe 30 seconds for faith. Faith, bottom line is this. Faith is not just you exerting, exerting your belief. I believe, I believe. That's not what faith is. Do you know what? That is another form of your trying to control it. Faith is not your attempt to control. It's not. I believe, I believe. You know, do you want to say, oh, you, are, you, are, you need to believe, you need to believe. I don't want you to walk away from this place and feel guilty. Oh, I'm so like in faith. I need to have more willpower. That is not this message. You know, in the core of faith, do you know what it is? Surrenderness. Faith cannot be understood without your heart of surrenderness. Knowing and believing this God is in control. I'm not in control. I'll do my job. I'll do what I can. So I surrender before God the outcome. Whatever that outcome is, you believe. You trust. This God is good God. This God is a God who takes care of the birds or lilies on the field. This is a God who sent his son Jesus, died on the cross when we were sinners, and invited us into the eternal hope and say, this God is trustworthy. And say, I believe this God, I surrender. Now it changes everything. Now it changes everything in the 11th hour of your life. In the, in the Last 2023, last few hours of your life, you say, if I trust this Lord, whether I have a life or death, I have assurance. So what Jesus says is this, do not worry, do not worry, but surrender, have faith. And if you want to truly worry about, understand that your things that you should worry about is seek First, the kingdom of God and righteousness, all things that will be added unto you. Can you say amen? amen? This is it. This is where it comes from. Hey, I'll take care of your life. Trust me. But can I give you a job? That can you partner with me seeking his kingdom and righteousness first? Priority. Okay, first doesn't mean everything. Okay, first there, that doesn't mean that you should quit the job. You should go to Bible college. You should do nothing about your mortgage. It's not, no, it's not about that. That's not what God wants you to do. You need to live your life in such a way as uh, diligent as possible. But the first, the priority, priority not as in something that you, was a, um, uh, compartmentalized, or like I do God on Sunday, I do the God and the world the rest of the 
day, week. No, it's not. It's more about God. You are first in everything I do. When I wake up, you're first. When I eat, you're first. When I play golf, you're first. Yes, hope so. How come I'm so bad at it, right? God is the first, and if you want to worry about seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will add on to you. Can I ask you guys? You go home today, and when you think about your life, think about this passage. Do you really believe in this? Do you understand this? Some of you guys getting married next year, like uh, some of you guys, right? And filled with hope and joy right there. And I know, <laughs> you know, you ask Jacob, his marriage is it's good. <laughs> he said, yes, of course. You say, yes. <laughs> amen. <laughs> he says, amen. But life has a lot of things that we do not expect. And I'm saying, Pastor Roche, how can you not worry? How can we not anxious? Because I don't know the things, what's going to wait for me. That's why you have to have a faith. You don't live by, walk by sight, but walk by faith. And how is that going to happen? It only happens when you know how to surrender before God. Go home and think about before next year comes, my friend, what do you need to surrender? What do you need to vigorously, consistently, furiously fight for this surrendered misfall? What do you need to lay down? Is that the past trauma or past failure or past of whatever happened to you? Or is it your pride? Is it your attitude to control things of the future? See, you know, we talk about discipleship. Discipleship is a discipline to let go of the control that is in God's control. Can you say amen? It comes down to this. Learn how to identify what, needs to con- what is in God's control. Who did this best? Jesus did it. Okay. When Jesus died on the cross, just right before that, he said, God, I don't want to do this. And what did he say? He said this. Father, if you are willing, remove the cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. What did he do right there? Surrender. Our entire salvation came from the surrenderedness of one perfect man. God is a God who understands that heart and responds to that heart of surrenderedness. God hates pride. God has, hates any attempt to control the things that actually in His control, pretending that we are our own God. That's where the surrenderedness comes. And can I tell you what comes after surrenderness? Victory. Oh, victory. That sweet victory in Christ. I need you to experience this Christianity. It's not just about something that is in your head or something that you cultured into. It's not just an institutionalized ideology, but it is actually life. You know this God is undeniably true in our life, but only can come through your surrenderedness. So, can you, can you think about what you need to surrender before God? You know why? Because ultimately, the way of the cross, surrendering, dying on the cross, was the only way to ultimate victory in our life. I want to send you home with this word. The way of the cross was the only way to the victory, ultimate victory. Jesus showed us, gospel is came from that the way of the cross. What's the cross? Surrenderedness. Jesus says, if you want to follow me, take up your cross daily. What, do you sur- what are you surrendering, right? The so question is, what are you surrendering? You're holding on to so tightly, you know, thinking that I'm in control and God helped me to get what I want. That is not the way the victory will come. It comes only when you open it. God, my life is in your hand. I know this much clearly these days, going through this sickness, is like, wow, this is what this is all about. You know? When God is inviting us, especially a leader like me, who had to have a, some sense of always this pressure to control, lead, and I have to lead through the surrenderedness, way of the cross, then the victory will not come in our lives. 
All right. How about we just spend some time in prayer? Can I ask you to bow your head? I told you it's going to be a short sermon. But it's this important sermon. It's an important sermon that I'm going to come back to again and again and again. I'm not interested in just having a wonderful, eloquent sermon that you will not have any truth experience in your life. I want you, I want to preach the sermon that you actually can apply into your life and see the transformation of your life, of your marriage, of your finances, of your job. Wherever you go, you know this is the truth. The way of the cross was the only way to the ultimate victory in our life. What are you surrendering? What are you not surrendering? What are you holding on to? What are you doing, deceiving yourself, thinking that you are in control when you are not in control? Can I invite you to spend next just literally two minutes? Name it one by one. This is how you should do it. Don't elaborate it. Just say, God, I surrender my marriage. I surrender my job. I surrender my husband's faith. My wife's faith, I surrender my health. Just say it, the word, just so, so compound in a way, just so no one else can understand, but you and God can understand. Just say it, He knows it. Surrender it before God. Your desire, your dissatisfaction, your failure, your mistake, your dream, your hope and success, bring it before God. Lay it down one by one and surrender before God and put Him, put all those in God's hand. Let's see what God does. Let's pray. He lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground. You took the fall, and by your One more song, one more one last time, and let's say it as a respond to the word of God that God has spoke to you. Let's pray. Above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders, this world has ever known. Above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what.
can I ask you just hold hands someone sitting next to you just one last time or this year one last or this year let's bless that person that's what church is all about let's ask God to give the person the powerful faith in their life yeah so they can surrender let's pray let's pray for each other before we go yes God thank you for Jesus Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Looking back, that we see that in our lowest day, you're still there. In our high day, you're still there. In our success and victory, you're there. But in our even failure and defeat, you are there too. Our past history teaches us, our history, humankind teaches us the Word of God, the Bible teaches us this God is trustworthy. So today, we want to say at the end of, end of the 2023, another year, we want to say thank you. We want to say that you are a faithful God. So we ask of you, your supernatural presence, follow with us so that we can truly be faithful to you as well. Let there be faith. The faith of this God who controls, who cares, who loves, who provides every aspect of this whole economy and the whole social economy and all this um, world that we are living, Lord God. So we come before you, Lord, with the faith that 2024 will be the year of the surrenderedness and victory, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a big clever offering, church. All right. Okay. Guys, just one more thing. One more thing. From next month, next week, things are going to be a bit changed, especially for Sydney campus. Not that much different, right? We're going to act a very past uh, was a house church centric so next month it will be uh, Sunday service run by uh, Isaac and Jody's our church yay yay Woo! and the month after that I think it's Kevin Jin right Kevin Jin and Subin's our church going to run Sunday services so please like, you know, you, you will see what we are trying to do together and the shepherds will preach once a month and all that right and this benediction we're going to do today will be the Last time we're going to use, we're going to change our 10th year of our church. We change the benediction from next week, next week, yeah? So how about we give our, each other benediction? But please sit down, right? Especially sit down. I'm at Sydney campus. Don't run away. We're going to straight up because we're going to finish as soon as possible. But go course, Melbourne, you are free to go. But let me give you a benediction. As we finish our Sunday service and worship, I urge you to continue worship in your daily life, in what you do, what you say, what you think. Give God living sacrifice. So may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Everyone says, Amen. 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 Happy New Year. Woo. Let's take it.